Creating a planet would be pretty sweet, right? We could design it how we like, maybe an ocean here, here, or we want to have an ocean everywhere. As we look to send humans to Mars and eventually terraform the planet, you may or may not be thinking, why don't we just make our own planet? Is this even possible, or is this a far-fetched thought? Theoretically, it is possible. Throwing some asteroids, dust and comets together should eventually give you something, but sadly it's not that easy. Getting all this matter would be one issue. You might think the asteroid belt could be a great source of matter, but surprisingly the mass of the asteroid belt is only about 4% the mass of the moon, or 0.05% the mass of planet Earth, which means we'd be making something ridiculously small, which is only about 100 kilometers in diameter. So is there anything else we can use? There's something called the Kuiper belt, which is just past Neptune. This is similar to the asteroid belt in the fact that there's a whole load of small bodies orbiting the sun, which are either rocks or metals, and then we have a whole load of frozen and water out there. With the Kuiper Belt being estimated to have a mass of about one tenth of Earth's, the Asteroid Belt and Kuiper Belt combined could have a mass something similar to Mars, which means we're beginning to get something decently sized, but something close to the size of Earth would be better considering it would be a similar gravitational environment for us, which is something we're already used to. Something called the Oort Cloud, which is thought to be 2,000 to 50,000 AU away, which at the maximum is almost one light year away, or a quarter of the distance to the nearest star, contains so much matter that it's believed to have the mass of multiple Earths, perhaps a dozen of them, which means this could provide us with that missing matter we were after. Travelling 2000 AU at about 17 km per second, which is what Voyager 1 is travelling at, would take 550 years, and that's just to get there. Voyager 1, which is said to have left the solar system, is only 127 AU away from Earth, which is a lot less than 2000, which it is to get to the Oort Cloud, and that's been travelling for 36 years and 8 months. You'll probably think that Pluto is pretty much the edge of the solar system, but if the sun was as big as a coin, Earth would be about 2 metres away. 69 metres away, Pluto would be orbiting there, and then the edge of the solar system, which is the Oort Cloud, would actually be 80,000 metres away from that coin. The Oort Cloud is very far away. Let's say though that we've got a significant amount of matter in our hands. What happens next? The problem with throwing a whole bunch of dust, rock and ice together means that we're going to create a massive amount of energy and heat. We've already got the problem of the planet being molten for a long period of time, and then we've got the problem of mass segregation, which means the heavier parts of the planet want to be in the centre of the system, while the lighter ones want to be further away from the centre. The matter to create a new planet is out there, and it could be possible. It's going to take an enormous amount of effort, and we can see that things like the asteroid bat have hardly any mass at all. To get something about 20% the mass of Earth would be pinching most of Jupiter's and Saturn's moon, the asteroid belt and the Kuiper belt. It would be a difficult challenge, and then we would have the problems of who would take control of this planet. We all know there's some control freak countries out there. Slingshotting matter around the solar system and crashing them into moons might sound unreasonable. But let's be honest, it would be quite awkward if we destroyed Earth by throwing big pieces of matter around. But hey, we can all dream. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to get updates when we upload future videos. Future topics include are there quakes on the moon and how do we discover exoplanets?